Hey, what's up guys? JB back again with another edition of my Future Look series. And this week is the return of Queen Mashari, this time as a new 100 cost Earth Mage. And Mashari here is set to be Earth's third 100 cost unit, joining Oberon and Zazan. So let's unpack her kit here today and see what she can do. And let's start first by looking into her TMR. And this one provides a three turn buff to your allies of both 20 defense and 20 missile resistance and it has two casts. Notably, it's a large burst style buffing radius with up to two range centered on the caster. I do really like this one for those missile matchups, but outside of that, you know, defense, while nice to have, is highly penetrated to the point that you can almost expect any defense value that you achieve to be negated by up to 70% or more by modern attackers. In terms of that missile resistance, we're generally seeing 40 to 50% typed penetrations of modern missile attackers as well. So while the total mitigation package here is pretty nice, I think that when I'm choosing a primary mitigation effect for my team, I'm more likely to go with something like Protect, and Shell, or even a Barrier. This certainly could be a good buff for layering on top of those ones though as a, as a secondary mitigation. Now let's dive a little bit into her stats here, but first I do want to highlight what I feel is a pretty good mastery here from Mashari, and she comes in with both a 10% area resist as well as a 20% innate counter block chance. Now jumping into her stats, and it's difficult to look past that chonky magic stat here, Mashri gets 590 innate magic, 406 of which is her base value. And among her UR peers, that's going to have her sitting at 5th overall for both of those categories. So very, very solid there for Mashari. She does also have very respectable starting decks and luck values as well, particularly her luck value here at 248, which is above the UR average. Mashari also has a couple of very nice typed resistances here with both 15% to slash and missile damage. She's also positive when it comes to magic damage as well, but just at 5%. Now in terms of her agility, while her starting value of 66 is pretty decent, I do have to note that she's right at the UR average of 56 base agility, while being just under the UR average when also accounting for her progression board and passive abilities. And the main reason I want to highlight this is because she has no passives to further increase the agility, as we'll come to see here in the next section. Another con that I'm seeing for Mashari is in terms of her base damage mitigation. And here Mashari has no innate defense or spirit. Now in the current state of War of the Visions, you know, as I was just mentioning, these stats are much less valuable than they used to be. And that's due to those large penetrations now achievable in the game. That said, they're still very nice to have. And all modern mages that we've seen recently, mages like Velus, Ranan, Darkfina, Terra, Resnick, even Sadali, have all been able to build their base defense and spirit levels to a respectable value. And unfortunately, Mashari not having that option, in addition to having what is just a average level of hit points, is going to make her susceptible to being one shot, particularly from pierce damage where she's carrying that 10% weakness. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about Mashari's passives and counters. And continuing on the trend of recently released units, we have one massively high-powered main job passive with really not many other compelling options to choose from. And I've really been finding a lack of build diversity in the last couple of units released. But the first build choice I've highlighted here again is my all-around sort of all-purpose build, and that's using this impressive main job passive, which does include 25 accuracy, 40 spirit pen, and 50% counter block chance. So including that mastery that we talked about, she's now at an impressive 70% base chance to ignore counter abilities. This 25 accuracy boost on top of it is also a big reason why she is in the top 20 overall in terms of her innate accuracy at roughly 189%. Now I've added to that here her speed cast passive from Time Mage, which lowers her casting time by 25%. And I do really like this option for her, for a specific reason that we'll talk about in the skills overview. Another possible choice though would be more of an Arithmetician build. And there again you'd be using the main job passive, but adding to that you would use the skill upgrade passive that comes with that job. And if you're using those Arithmetician skills, that's going to increase the power on several of them. I don't really find this build all that compelling, but you know, the option is certainly there for more niche use cases. Now the last two passives that I've not highlighted here I don't really see as all that viable, particularly the level 4 to 3 passive from Arithmetician, which in the level 120 era is essentially a non-factor in that a level 120 unit is divisible by both 3 and 4, so this passive in effect is doing nothing to max level units.
units. The null CT passive that she gets from Time Mage, you know, it's okay. It does actually null both the stop and slow effects, but it does come at the cost of not being able to use haste or quicken on yourself. So maybe more of a niche consideration. Now in terms of Mashiri's counters, I really do like the one that comes from her main job here. And this is actually the same one that Dark Fina has that we looked at last week. But again, very strong counter. It has that four range and an above average chance of going off at 30%. And this one preemptively is going to hit the attack for a 121% non-elemental magic attack. So a very nice counter here, and I do really like this one quite a bit. She does have access to damage distribution and slow counter as well. They do have much less range on them though, and are retaliation based rather than preemptive. So again, maybe more niche when it comes to using those. All right, so I did mention a little bit earlier that I was a little bit concerned when it came to Mashiri's base agility. So here's just a little one sheet analysis that I put together. And while Mashiri certainly isn't a speed demon, I think she can get to a spot where she's going to be just fine, though I really think that it may require a 15% agility card in your party's primary slots to get there. And you know, in some parties, you may be able to get away without that. But in terms of Mashiri, I do feel that it will be a must in top end PvP ranks. And you can see here on the absolute low end, her agility would be in a pretty rough spot for her current meta at just 80. And that would really be using a, a slow Esper and, and really no agility bonuses or cards in the party. So, so that's really the floor of where her agility would be at. Now, generally when I'm building a party, I'm shooting at a 100 agility range or better for my units. And you really wanna do that for two reasons. The first is to avoid getting lapped in the mid fight by a faster unit but also with an autoplay so that you don't have your initial buffing phase shortened or even worse nullified by a quicker enemy. So a very important statistic. You can see though that if Mashiri is able to focus on her agility, the build on her top end is able to get her to a very healthy competitive spot at more than 110. And really she could go even a little bit above this if you were really hard focused on it and even gave her like an agility trust stone set. I personally don't think that I would do that, but you know, the option is certainly there, especially if you don't have access to some of these other things such as two agility cards. All right, so moving on to Mashiri's main kit and let's first start with her buffing abilities. And the first one here is a party buff and this one gives protect to your allies as well as 50 magic attack to herself. Good mix of defense and offense on this one and should really help pull her out of that one shot territory when it comes to physical based damage. I do find protect and shell status is very strong in the current state of the game since there are just very few units out there who are able to dispel that status in the current state. That 50 magic attack that this one gives on top of it is a huge modifier boost as well and should allow her to just delete the enemy in those first couple of turns while it's active, especially with her limit burst, which we'll talk about here in a couple of minutes. Her second buff is really a marquee one. And with this one, she's getting two casts of self re-raise. So very similar to Dark Fina in that regard as well. The interesting thing here though, is that Mashiri's re-raise has a secondary buff on it, but it's actually a new mechanic for the game in that that this buff triggers when the re-raise occurs. So when Mashiri dies in battle and comes back, she's getting 20 CT added to her bar, along with a 55% cast time decrease. Now, if you add that to her 25% speed cast passive that we talked about, she's gonna be sitting at 80% cast time reduction, which will effectively bring any and all of her spells, even her long 200 cast time spells, into the one tick casting zone. Or if you were to add a trust stone passive on top of it, would then put her at an instant cast capability. And that's a pretty big deal. It's gonna make it nearly impossible for an enemy to have a chance to interrupt her casting or have an opportunity to move and attack before that damage can come out. In autoplay in particular, the AI does shy away from using spells, which will resolve after an opponent can move in the turn order. So this status will open up her complete spell book and allow her to freely use her most damaging option in any given situation. So very, very cool buff here from Mashiri. And I really like this design space that they're exploring. Okay, so let's look at her attacks now. And the first one is a range four, range height one, 121% mod with a 25 spirit break coming before the damage. It's also an instant cast ability. And this is her low AP attack at just 16 AP. And honestly, it's a great one. And it should do quite a bit of damage, especially on low spirit targets. Her next attack is also a range four, range height one, and this time with a medium 165 mod with a buff of 50 spirit penetration added to Mashiri before the damage comes in. So including her innate spirit penetration and a trust stone passive, this would have Mashiri at 100 spirit penetration and ignoring spirit entirely for this attack. It does actually come along with two bonus effects as well. 
and that's a 30% hit modifier, as well as increasing the summon gauge by 125. So definitely some nice added utility there on this one. And this can certainly be a go-to attack for her against very, very evasive units. And that summon gauge increase is just a cherry on top. All right, her third attack here is her first AoE option, and it's bringing that large diamond area of effect. And this one has a range 3 with a plus 2 from the AoE, bringing it up to 5 total range. We also have a strong range height 2, again with a plus 1 from the AoE. And this is a large 220% modifier with a magic barrier break happening before the damage. And this is actually the largest sized barrier break we've seen to date in War of the Visions. So very, very nice option for Mashiri to have here in her tool belts. And it's not going to be difficult at all for her to hit multiple units with this, who may be trying to stack up barriers on her. Okay, her final attack here is a range 3 plus 1 on the cross AoE. Again, range height 2 with a plus 1. And again, we have a large 220% modifier here. And this attack is essentially a focused, sort of high-powered Law of Geo Absorption. It's coming in with that magical strike damage and a 30% drain effect on top of it. And just like with Law of Geo Absorption, this is a non-reflectable skill and will allow her to bypass Runic. Unfortunately though, this is her only ability outside of her Limit Burst with that capability but definitely a great one for her to have access to. And, and as we've seen in, in the past with units like Regalia Glassy and Summer Elserel, that magical strike damage comes in pretty hot. And as we know, the majority of units in War of the Visions do carry an innate strike weakness. One thing I will note is Law of Geo Absorption is a 165 mod. And this one here, again, is 220%. So this one is going to do massive, massive damage. Okay, so last but not least here, we have Mashiri's Limit Burst. And this one is actually a carbon copy of Black Rose Helena's Limit Burst. This one, of course, just being Earth-based. And it comes in with that 38% Earth Imperil prior to the 200% damage mod. And again, it has that large diamond AoE. And I think most of us know by now how powerful these kind of Limit Bursts are. With that Imperil coming pre-damage and that large AoE like this, this attack is definitely throwing Mashiri into that damage carry conversation. So very, very nice Limit Burst here. Okay, moving on and let's take a look at Queen Mashiri's sub jobs. And for her main job sub, she gets two skills. The first one being a TP based status effect. And this one comes in with a cross AOE with a 25% chance to stop with up to four range. And you know, this is okay, you know, nothing great here, but maybe something you could use as a last ditch effort or, or maybe when you're running out of AP or, or something like that. Again though, you know, as we talked about with Dark Fina, that 25% chance to stop is very easy to shut down these days with just a single trust stone ability. Her second skill here though, I really, really like. For one, because it's giving her a little bit of a support angle. And this one gives her a range four, range height two, 210 potency, single target heal. So that's essentially a curata. On top of that though, it's buffing the target with 20 all element resistance. And I think that's really, really nice. You know, element resistance these days, I feel is one of the best ways to bulk up and mitigate damage on your units, especially when it's an omni element resistance as this one is here. So very, very nice skill. Now in terms of her other sub jobs, Arithmetician and Time Mage, I'm not going to go too deeply into these ones. These are both very old jobs that have been with us for quite a while. I've put what I think are the notable skills here. Unfortunately for my manual followers out there, she does not get access to Quicken from Time Mage. She does though have Haste, of course, which is very powerful as always. In lieu of Quicken, she did get Meteor, which may be decent enough against targets which are really stacking up high earth resistance. It does have a nice 220% modifier on it. In terms of her arithmetician sub job, you know, CT average and level 3 disable are nice skills for manual play. Otherwise, I think the appeal of this sub job is not only that instant cast nature of the skills, but also the very long range that they come along with as well. She does get that level 3 cura skill, which is another way she can have access to healing, though the modifier on it isn't all that great. For me personally, I think that that healing skill that she gets from her main job sub that's bringing that elemental resistance is looking pretty spicy. So I can definitely envision myself using that one quite a bit. I think it could be pretty valuable in a Guild War situation on a second strike for Mashiri to heal up your tank while also making them that much more resistant at the same time. Or even in manual play, you could use this to preemptively buff yourself for that elemental resistance as you're trying to approach the enemy. And it definitely is retaining value even in a healing down rule set because of that buff that it's bringing. Okay, so on to future considerations. And beyond Mashiri, 
see what else do we have to look forward to for the Earth elements. You know, as of now, Earth doesn't really have a lot of options or really much of anything to support an Earth magic based damage threat. That's going to get solved in a big way with this vision card and Esper combination in Sheraton. And she's joining the list of FFBE bosses that they've brought over into Wotive, which is definitely really cool to see. Really cool artwork on this one, as always. Uh, you know, I love seeing those bosses sort of visualized in this art style. It, it looks incredible. The vision card, though, is bringing that coveted 50% magic up to the party with very nice supporting stats of 25 accuracy and 10% slash resist. It's also going to bestow the card holder with 10 area resist and another 8 accuracy. The card itself does have that 3 agility base stat as well, which Mashiri is really going to like. So I do really like this card quite a bit. It's, it's giving Mashiri a nice all around package here. And that 33 total accuracy that she would get is going to go a long way in helping her neutralize any evade shenanigans going on out there. I can really see this as a nice card with Noctis in the party as well to sort of amp up the damage on his Armager ability. If for whatever reason though you're able to pull Mashiri but not get this vision card, the Dreams of Heroism vision card that we currently have in the game is a decent enough option and definitely more of a defensive option for Mashiri because it gives that 20 area resist to the party. And if the global limited bestowed ability for Mashiri is updated to include this new version, it could be a sneaky good vision card for her. All right, so let's move into the timeline here though. And this is what we're looking at in the next four to five months. So as you can see here, we're looking at Mashiri and her vision card sometime in late August to early September. But outside of that, there really isn't any other Earth to speak of for the foreseeable future. And honestly, even prior to this, it's been a while since we've seen Earth coming into the game. We have to go all the way back to the Final Fantasy XV collaboration, where in and around that event, Earth got Oberon and Noctis, Halloween Frederica, and all their respective vision cards kind of all in a very short period. But putting back on my speculation hat and, and sort of dusting off my crystal ball, and again, I'm, I'm really looking ahead to our next global festival. And honestly, this is the time time frame here when I think it's most likely to happen sometime in mid to late August. And I do believe there they're going to look at maybe throwing the summer units at us as well in or around that same time. But looking closely at what's coming element wise both before and after this time frame, I'm really seeing another opportunity for Gumi to go back to their global playbook of preemptively selling us a solution to a future meta problem. Because you know by that time we're going to have heard about and maybe even seen firsthand how much of a terror Final Fantasy XIII's Lightning and Orlando EX has been on the JP side, or maybe even how strong Snow and Agrius and Velus have been as a combination. And because of that, I really see a high potential for Gumi to try and sell us on both Earth and Fire, to have us rushing to buy in and counter those metas before they even have a chance to get off the ground. And you know, this has sort of become my favorite section of these videos. I don't know why, but I really find this sort of elemental push-pull very fascinating and a lot of fun to try and predict and time will certainly tell if I'm correct here but if so you heard it here first folks. So what's my verdict on Queen Mashiri? And my first pro here and, and probably one of the things that I'm most excited about is that counter chance block that she has innately at 70%. So you can just add in a trust stone ability there for another 20% and then we're looking at a 90% chance to block the opponent's counter just by existing. She won't need to buff up at all to get that. Though if you did have somebody like Locke or others in your party who could bring that buff, she can at that point have them completely negated. But at that 90% value, you know, just for context, something like Reflex with that base 15% chance of occurring, and I know what everybody's thinking out there, 15% is BS and, and I get that, but let's go with it. You know, that 90% reduction is going to give Reflex just a 1.5% chance of occurring. So I really don't think I can overstate enough how nice it is that this unit doesn't have to worry about not only Reflex, but any of the other nice counters out there. Things like Anti-Evil from Elena, or even Sword or Magic Guard for their damage mitigation effects. So definitely a huge check in the pro column here for Mashiri. Now that said, it's going to make it feel even that much worse when Cloud or others inevitably hit that 1.5% chance. And I'm sure we'll see that from time to time, but, but I really don't envision it happening all that often with this unit. Okay, so next pro, and, and this is a big one from Mashiri, and that's that she has true damage carrying potential. It's going to be very difficult to mitigate her damage. She has that large diamond earth imperil on her limit break, the large diamond magic barrier break as well. And as we saw in the skills overview, she has multiple damage types with high modifiers. 
So this is a unit who's certainly going to be capable of coming in and one-shotting other units and being an absolute terror on the battlefield. Now along with that damage, she also has a couple of very nice support options as well. You know, as we noted, she can bring Protect to the party, and her sub-jobs give her access to some healing or haste support on top of it. She's also bringing in that very nice innate accuracy, and her vision card adding that full 25 party accuracy on top of it. All of this puts Mashiri, and really Earth in general, into an excellent position when it comes to hunting evade units. And you know, the Kalem card with that accuracy and dexterity on it is a very underappreciated subvision card for the Earth element. So while she doesn't have a guaranteed hit available to her in her kit, she's really not going to have to worry about evade all that much, you know, assuming that you have access to these vision cards. But what about the drawbacks that I'm currently seeing for this unit? And the first one is her lack of innate magic res penetration. Now, in the event that comes alongside Mashiri, there is a new mace weapon that will provide her 20%. But you may also consider a TMR like Garvel's, for example, if you were really worried about other units stacking up very high magic resistance on you. You just need to balance that with wanting her to get off her self-re-raise and protect onto the party. So it's definitely a trade-off that you would need to consider. Second drawback, and this is a big one for this unit, and that's her lack of innate defenses. And that's mainly centered around her average level of hit points and a lack of innate defense and spirit. And she's going to be particularly wary of enemies that are bringing in pierce damage. Alright, so my last con here is really due to the fact that she's bringing in two very old and dated subjobs, an arithmetician and time mage. And honestly, these leave a little bit to be desired in the current state of the game. Not only from a build diversity standpoint with those dated passives that they're bringing, but also in the skills that they're bringing in the sub kits that very much lack in comparison to more modern and current jobs. From a manual perspective, you know, there are definitely some things to like here with Mashiri, and certainly this is a unit that you'll definitely have to respect when it comes to her damage and accuracy levels. Her protect and re-raise combo give her a pretty decent way to approach a ranged enemy as well. But on that note though, I really do see that lack of mobility as her main weakness for that particular playstyle. But if you're able to accommodate that, I think there's definitely some room for this unit to shine, and she'll certainly be a great foil to the lightning teams out there, of which I expect to see many for the foreseeable future with both Lightning and Orlando on the horizon after she's released. My final word here though is that this is a great unit with meta disrupting potential and a strong earth magical threat is exactly what the doctor ordered to help stave off all of the high powered lightning threats that are building up in the game. In terms of the earth element though, they are really lacking when it comes to a strong frontline tank. Earth definitely has Muraga, and I do think that's a pretty decent option, especially against more physically focused enemies. Even more so now with Mashiri coming in and being, being able to imbue him with Protect, but he's still going to get torn up by any magical based threats out there. And I do see Muraga as more towing the line between that bruiser and tank role. So Earth, in my opinion, is still really in sore need of a next generation sort of all around tank that many of the top elements have access to in the current game state. All right, guys, so that's Queen Mashiri. And believe it or not, this is actually our third and, and definitely our best version of Mashiri, in my opinion. And Mashiri never has really been a meta unit in any of her past iterations. So I'm actually looking forward to throwing this one out there in battle, having her live up to that War of the Visions animated trailer where she's out there on the battlefield absolutely dominating. All right, so I gave you my thoughts on this unit, and I think it came across that I'm actually pretty high on this one, but I wanna hear what you guys have to say. Are you an Earth main? Is Mashiri your favorite story unit and you can't wait to run all three versions together? And do you see this version of Mashiri as a potential meta disruptor as I do, especially in the face of that Final Fantasy 13 and Final Fantasy Tactics collab announcement? Sound off and definitely let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. And you know, we just actually hit another channel milestone here with 600 subscribers. So shout out to you all for that one. And if you haven't subscribed yet and, and you enjoy what I'm doing here on the channel and, and wanna see more, definitely let me know what you think and hit that subscribe button. And that's really all I have to say today. So as always, stay safe out there and I'll see you guys in the next one.